Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Droid Life Show, uh, episode 6-5 tonight. Crew with me, well, I'm Kellen, your host with me, Tim, Ron, Kyle. Everybody say hi real quick. Hey, guys. How's it going? Tim here. Hey, this is Ron. Hey, Kyle. Tim, I had me clicked if you want to say hi again real quick. Oh, hey, guys. Tim here from Droid Life. How's it going? Sorry about that. I almost did it again. I think last, the last show I clicked myself for the first like 20 minutes. It was yeah. really awkward. <laughs> uh, so programming note before we begin, we, we mentioned this on Google Plus last week and on Twitter and basically said that since it's a summer, news has slowed a little bit and it's the summer and we get two and a half months basically of summer in Portland. We're doing shows every other week, uh, um, but that won't last for long. Hey, Kellen. Uh, yeah. We may have a bit of a technical issue. A couple of people in the chat are saying they cannot see us. Oh, oh now, now it says just started. Yeah, I think it. I think it's fine. Uh, so, anyways, we are doing shows every other week uh, until probably just for the next month. So, don't worry, we're we're still here going full time uh, once uh, probably middle or end of August gets going. So, all right. But with that said, since we're a week off, we have tons of stuff to talk about, like Motorola Nexus rumors. Moto X Plus One potential pictures. Tim revealed or reviewed all the new Shield products. I think we've also posted our G3 and One Plus review since the last show. Verizon's throttling people or preparing to. There's all sorts of stuff going on. And, of course, apps and games and all that stuff. So uh, let's first start with... Uh, and, yes, I'm still in black and white, by the way. <laughs> That's what's wrong. Uh, let's start with the uh, Motorola Nexus rumors since I think it's safe to say that almost everyone in the Android world has always wanted a Motorola Nexus, at least on some level. I guess if you started from back in the day, if you had a Motorola Droid or something, you've kind of been waiting for the Motorola Nexus. Uh, the rumors, though, suggest that a Motorola Nexus is currently codenamed Shamu, as in whale, and it's apparently a whale of a phone weighing in at 5.9 inches. So we have two reports, one from Android Police, the other from The Information. Within a couple of days, they both put these out and said, this is what we're hearing. And so uh, apparently Google got together with Motorola right after they announced that they were going to ship them off to Lenovo and uh, started working on this Nexus. So 5.9-inch Nexus phone. I refuse to use that word of phone tablet combined, so I'm not going to say that, but this is an oversized phone tablet hardware thing. I'm just interested what your guys' thoughts are. Would you buy a Motorola Nexus if it was, you know, a massive 5.9-inch phone? We kind of had a lot of people, at least on the site, suggest maybe not, that they wouldn't be interested. That's way too damn big. Hmm. Tim, any thoughts there? Um, no, unfortunately. I think I'm capped at 5.5 inches, unless somehow the thing is nothing but display, and there's absolutely no bezel whatsoever. Uh, if it's like an infinity pool or something. Um, it's other like than a I can't one-handed use though, right? Yeah, pretty much, right? Um, yeah, I can't see myself getting into uh, a 5.9 incher. Just sounds too big for my taste. Yeah, it sounds huge. So in the picture of the poll we posted, I I used a uh, the Oppo N1, which is a 5.9 inch phone. Uh, granted, mm-hmm. that has all sorts of bezel. It is huge. I couldn't handle that phone for more than a couple of days before I put it back in the box. Uh, Ron, we know you don't like oversized phones, but even though Motorola is making one, does that make it at least a little interesting or still no? It just sounds like a giant phone with a crappy camera. So it sounds like a, it sounds like every Nexus before, which is fine, but you know, it's I mean, it doesn't sound like anything new or exciting. So I think I'd rather see LG give it a third swing than see Motorola crap it up with a bad camera again. Yeah, I kind of feel like Motorola finally gets it. You know, it's it's like a parting gift or something. Google's like, Motorola, before you go, let's let's do a Nexus finally, but we want to make it the worst Nexus ever by making it 5.9 inches in size. Uh, I think well, it's probably just like they brought them in for the meeting, right? They're like, guys, we got good news and we got bad news. Good news, you're making a Nexus. Bad news, we are selling you to, to Lenovo. <laughs> <laughs> probably, it probably was similar. Like the conversation probably did. Uh, come right next to each other. Kyle, any thoughts here? Moto Nexus 5.9 inch whale? Yeah, I never consider buying one personally. <laughs> That's too huge. It, it will be. Uh, it will have the benefit of being cheap though, if uh, history is any indication. Um, so maybe it'll sell well, but 
I don't know. Um, I'll use the word. Fablets are not my thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of with Tim on 5.5 is about the cap. And the cap there meaning the, the way LG does it, where they do it without using any bezel whatsoever in a phone that actually fits in the palm of your hand a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Moto Nexus at 5.9 inch, I, it's sad to say, but I, I just don't care. I, I Obviously, we'll get one for the site and to review it and talk about it and all that stuff, but I can't imagine carrying around a phone with that large of a display and, like Ron said, a crappy camera. Guaranteed, right? Crappy camera. Mm -hmm. And oh, part of, the, part of the report from the information said that uh, Google's getting together with them because they want to use like active display and, and the always-on voice stuff and things like that. And so, you know, maybe they'll find a convenient way to use that with a 5.9-inch display. I have no idea. I feel like they shouldn't be able to do that, though. I don't think that's very fair for them to be able to build in Motorola's proprietary software because I feel like the Nexus line should just be straight Android from AOSP. They should end because Samsung or HTC or LG wasn't able to build in any of their software. Why should Motorola get special treatment? Uh, the thing is, um, any, any uh, phone with a, with a Snapdragon that has the built-in listening core would be able to use that feature. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, at least... At, well, no, I, I, was speci I specifically meant uh, my active display and all yeah. that. I didn't oh, mean, yeah. like, you know, well, okay, Google, because you can do that on any phone now, basically, thanks right. to the Google search update. Oh, there it goes I off mean, right there. A lot of phones <laughs> yeah. use AMOLED, though, so it's really the manufacturer's choice, I guess, but... Yeah. I was I was just more making drama out of nothing. I think it would be great for Google to implement <laughs> Motorola's crap into the well, Nexus. I think, I think they just bring it to the Nexus Five. Well, you can't. It's an LCD. Yeah. No. But the, well, I mean, the, big, could, the big thing is that you wouldn't you wouldn't want a Motorola Nexus without Motorola software. That's the only selling point for a Motorola phone yeah. is its software. It's not the hardware. Yeah, it's pretty much already a Nexus. It just has you know a few tweaks here and there. I mean, yeah, it's, it's exactly like a Nexus. It's a, it's a big phone with a crappy camera. With a crappy camera. Wait, it's not a big phone. It's a small phone with a crappy camera. The, yeah, the X is small. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, that's, that's uh, a Motorola Blackfish on the other hand. Mo yeah, Moto Blackfish is a no go if it's five point nine inches. I'm hoping that all that info is just wrong. I mean, a lot of the info that we've seen leaked recently, I feel like, has sort of just been wrong. So I'm kind of hoping that this, this too, is incorrect. So. Shamu. Shamu. I love whales, but damn. 5.9 is too big. 5.9 is way too big. I don't yeah. know what the hell they're thinking. So it's a very if, appropriate code name. It, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, completely fitting. Yeah, I don't, you know, obviously this stuff's still rumor, right? Nothing is confirmed, as uh, Tim always likes to say, but... Got two reports in a short amount of time. The both said the same thing. It's a big old phone. So uh, November potentially, since that's when most Nexus phones arrive. We shall see. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and our poll, by the way, that we ran that said, would anyone buy that? Fifty-five percent said no. Now, if that's that was a, this is going to have a five-inch display or something like that. I bet that would have switched to like eighty percent would have bought it. Mm -hmm. Sad as that is. Everyone with a Moto X would drop that and yeah, basically. get the sham there. Yep. Uh, so sticking with Moto, uh, we have photos of what could be the next Moto X, which either could be the Moto X plus one or we don't really know. Uh, but we have photos of it, and it has sort of a dual cutout-like experience on the back, one with a big old camera lens, and then the, a second cutout with a plasticky, cheap-looking maybe button or sensor, something like that. Otherwise, the design basically stays the same, but we may have aluminum on the outside, and these pictures are of a wood back, courtesy of the folks at Android Police. So uh, no confirmation on specs or anything. Did you guys see this Moto X Plus One, these pictures? Thoughts there? I mean, the rumors basically, as far as specs go, say like 5.2-inch full HD, uh, Snapdragon 800, 12 megapixel camera, 5 megapixel front, 2 gig RAM. So it sounds like a fine device. It's not quad HD, but that's not surprising. The backside, you know, with the wood back looks different. Uh, you know, it has the Moto logo that looks like plastic, as yeah. if you could take the back off and kind of, I, I don't know. Um, but the front side is ugly as hell. Like, with the dual speaker thing, yeah. yeah. Um, it looks like the Moto E or Moto G, whichever one, the Moto E, I think. And uh, ooh, that's nasty. Um, I don't, I don't like the way that looks either. Um, 
Although, yeah, like that dual LED flash on the backside, though, that, that looks neat. I think that's cool, um, the ring around the camera. Other than that, I think it's really nasty looking. Um, the side bezel with the kind of composite material going on here and the edges, I don't know, I think it's really ugly. Um, maybe get a darker wood on there or something, maybe a black front. I don't know, hopefully it comes to Moto Maker or something that doesn't have to look that bad. Hopefully this is an early prototype. Early so prototype. I would have to agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think the curves are pretty odd looking. Um, it it kind of reminds me of the backside of one of the newer IMAX in the worst possible way, <laughs> you know, where they were trying to hide the thickness. Mm. Um, I don't know. It just oh yeah, I know it looks really saying. bizarre. And I I don't think you have a picture of the bottom of the phone and the post um, that you link to. No, but I don't. You could, yeah, I I saw a picture of the bottom of the phone and it just oh my god, it it looks terrible. It just it's so thick near the center uh, because of the curve shape. Ooh, so yeah. yeah I'm, Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I know. I mean, you're right, it is um, just like an iMac, a bad designed I, iMac. I hope they uh, refined it a bit, but uh, we'll, we'll find out soon enough, probably, you know, this coming month. That thing's yeah. an abomination. Yeah, I, I mean, Tim, I'd have to agree, this thing is not a pretty phone. Because, yeah, I think the Moto E's ugly in general. The Moto X last year's was really nice looking phone. This thing with the dual speaker front and whatever that plastic button thing is, so last year when there was rumors of the Moto X, we had, uh, well, there was rumors that suggested that they were going to put, where the dimple is, they were going to put a sensor or a button or something in there so you could perform actions. And this looks like it's some sort of button. It kind of looks just, like a button. It does. It just, But it doesn't look good. It looks plasticky and cheap. Hopefully early, early, early prototype. Mm-mm-mm. Ron, are you still with us, by the way? I think so. Yeah, you are now. You were just kind of frozen there. I wasn't sure. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on the Moto X Plus One? Don't be I... what we saw. <laughs> yeah, that's a th- like. I agree. It looks really, really ugly. I'm kind of hoping it's like the uh, that early leak of uh, Motorola's smartwatch. Remember that was all super bulky and mm-hmm. terrible looking. So I'm kind of hoping it's the same thing where they actually have some better design going on there. I think putting speakers on front is it like I think we all appreciate that on the on the one, but so it's a good idea. But if it looks like garbage, then that's you know I don't think people are going to want to pick that up. So, right. um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, they, I think I think we we've talked about this a little bit before, um, especially when we're talking about like who we think is going to be the device maker that people are talking about this year. Um, I think we all kind of agree it's not going to be Samsung probably. Like all the all the things that they came out with. Last year, pretty much everybody has replicated. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, you can keep playing that game of okay, well, we're going to come up with some things that you know are maybe helpful for people, some random gestures or software features. But I don't know how often you keep playing that game. Like, you've got to innovate in a different space, especially when you have a crappy camera every single time. Like, you've got to have something to differentiate. And so, if you've got bad hardware and software that's innovative for a year, like, that's not a winning combination. So. Maybe, maybe maybe they'll have like an Ashton Kutcher edition now that Lenovo is going to own them. <laughs> you know, maybe you can get a Kelso version, Moto Maker with Kelso on it. I mean, there's there's some possibilities one. there. By Kelso, just sign it, and I'll be good. <laughs> the camera sensor on this thing looks huge. I don't know if that's just because the phone's small, or maybe yeah. they're doing finally something. Well, I mean, the, the one has two sensors, so I mean, obviously it's going to be great if it's a big <laughs> camera sensor. <laughs> yeah. The, I, I, just, the I don't trust Motorola outside. to make anything. I don't either. But the outer edge is, you know, reportedly aluminum on this thing too, and it. I just think it looks terrible. It looks like bad fake metal, like it worse looks, than Samsung's yes. done. It looks stupid. It looks. Well, with bad. the four, with the bands, you know, you got four at top, four mm-hmm. on bottom, and with the wood and the metal, like none of that goes together at all. Plastic, wood, and metal all in like the same thing. <laughs> like, oh man. We're getting all the elements or something with this design. Mm-hmm. It's like part Samsung, part HTC, part Motorola, and all terrible. Yeah, yeah. pretty much, yeah, because it does remind me of the one. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, interesting. So we don't know much about this other than we've seen these photos and there's rumored specs out there and all that good stuff. Uh, the only thing I've heard is that uh, September is a lot more likely than seeing this phone in August. It's at least the last I heard from someone. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know that I would get really excited 
you know, in terms of the next couple of weeks, I would say maybe early September to mid September before we see it. So, which just the last seems day of September. Yeah, the last day. I guess what? Well, the, when's the last day of summer? Like September twentieth or something? I always forget that it's that late, but it's really late. Mm-hmm. Somebody okay Google that. Yeah, pretty sure you're right. <laughs> so they technically have a ways to go. And Moto 360, we still have no idea. That's just kind of a mystery. We don't know when that's coming. I had heard that the plan was not to introduce them at the same time. It was to do the 360 before, but I don't know what's taking it so long. So who knows? Maybe it'll be September before we get both of those. It just seems like such yeah, a long I'd be, sh- I'd be shocked if they didn't do a bundle deal, but, you know, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Design at this point, your watch and phone at the same time. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it just kind of makes sense, right? So, all right. So, uh, moving out of Moto, Tim got his hands on Nvidia's new Shield products. So, Nvidia Shield tablet and Nvidia Shield controller, some accessories. Nvidia hooked you up with all a bunch of stuff. So, let's talk to Shield for a second. It kind of came out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden it was here. Well, we had some rumors about it. Then all of a sudden it was here, and it was announced, and we reviewed it. So. Yeah, this is the uh, NVIDIA Shield tablet powered by Tegra K1 processor with 192 CUDA cores and 2 gigs of RAM. It has a 5 megapixel <laughs> front facing camera, 5 megapixel rear facing camera. It is amazing. You know, I actually. I, <laughs> you, sound, you sound like that SNL skit. This <laughs> is like, luxury. I actually okay. came away uh, after reviewing these devices. Yeah, the Shield tablet and Shield controller have been the first things I've reviewed for DL that didn't have something in the not-so-good section or the bad section. Um, I came away super impressed. Um, I mean, it does... It, it kind of... It's kind of like a Shield portable last year's Shield, um, but it has a better display, and of course it is a tablet and a controller separated, so it's not just a clamshell device. Um I think it's great. If you were thinking about getting a tablet, uh, this would definitely be the one to get. Um, People were still kind of, who were thinking about maybe picking up a Nexus 7 from last year, I would say, heck no, get this thing. It has way more juice. Um, And you can just, you get so much more added value um, because you get access to the grid beta. Um, If you have a PC, like the one thing where I would say you have to buy this is if you have, if you play uh, computer games and you have a rig with a GeForce GTX graphics card, then you can game stream with this, with NVIDIA software. I mean, there's a lot of sweet features going on with the Shield tablet and Shield controller. And I, I got the devices, let's see, last Wednesday, so it's been a week. So even I haven't had it that long, but in this short amount of time, I've been super impressed. Battery life is good. I mean, really, like I like I said, I can't really think of anything that's bad about it. So, to me, that's a pretty darn good thing. So, 40 hours of gaming, you said in your review. With the controller. That's yeah. just the controller. Um, so, yeah, the, the controller won't die on you. Oh, okay, and it takes, I see, I see. Yeah, and it takes less than five hours to charge. Um, the, the tablet um, is, I think you get about six hours of, like, pure gaming. That's but if solid. you're just... If you're doing, like, regular tablet, like, watching an HD video, you get 10 hours or whatever. They never give you, like, that, here's how how many, you know, like, they only give you the, kind of like what Apple did back in the day. But uh, I think yeah. for milliamp hour, it's 5,300 in the tablet. So that's more than Nexus 7. That's more than uh, a lot of the big phones, the tablet phones. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. I think my only concern is, because I tried to buy like the whole bundle of everything is if you want everything the whole experience it's going to run you it like gets up 400, there. 400 bucks or something I guess that's still not that bad because the tablet's 300 right for the Wi-Fi and then like 60 for the control and then if you want the little case it's another like gotta, 40. Yeah, gotta have that so all in all what uh, three so, so 400, 400 bucks yeah. for the whole package and actually that's a pretty freaking sweet that package bad. man that's not bad it does 4k out and it does the console mode I mean, it, it's, like I said, it's a sweet package. And um, I couldn't come up with anything negative to say. And you kind of have to do go full package, right? Because then you can prop the tablet up with the little stand, and then you have the controller and all that stuff, yeah. Exactly. Um, 
to test one out. So we'll yeah, absolutely. Um, as you mentioned this morning, I don't think the 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 tablets are shipping already. Yeah. But I don't know about the controllers if they're shipping quite yet. No, so. controllers and the little cases aren't shipping. I don't think for another week or two. But the tablets oh. are. Like my tablet should be here tomorrow. I picked it up off of Amazon. Oh yeah, the rest, perfect. The rest of the stuff though, it's not supposed to ship till like August, which is yeah, like, crappy. Uh, yeah, you're really gonna. I think you're gonna have some fun. You just have to pull up some games. Like just the first thing you do, just set it up, pull up Grid Beta, and play like Borderlands 2. You know, or play Alan Wake or whatever. And it's it's legit. There's no lag. You know, I mean, and it, the PC game is streaming from the cloud, and you'd be surprised just how smooth it is. Well, you're gonna need the controller to play those games. Sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> better than a, a week or so. That's, yeah. Uh, does it support 360 controllers or you know any other third party controller? Uh, it supports the MOGA controller. Um, okay. I don't have a 360 controller. Try all I got is the Xbox One, and that wasn't working for me. You could so, probably hook up like a Bluetooth controller, but that's not the oh, same yeah. as because that has like a Wi-Fi Direct. It's like a yeah, special this is Wi-Fi connection. Direct, so it definitely has a, a higher bandwidth than the Bluetooth, which they say is like three megabits per second versus Wi-Fi Direct's twenty-four. And the reason they did that is because they said, sure, we could have used Bluetooth, but to get the best gaming experience, and uh, since it does have a uh, voice in and out chat capability, they needed as much like bandwidth as they could get. So they went Wi-Fi Direct. And what's great, I mean, with the Wi-Fi Direct, man, you, you turn this thing on, and then instantly, as soon as you press the little NVIDIA button on the controller, it instantly connects. Like, there's no pairing BS or anything. It's just instantaneous. So if but anyone... Charged, has, charged over sorry. USB, right? You don't have to swap batteries and things like Correct. that. Correct. All cool. micro USB. I think NVIDIA really kind of took what they learned from Tegra Note 7 and Shield Portable put it into this little package, and has a winner of a device. So, I don't know. If anyone has any questions, put them in the chat, and I'll feel free to answer them or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool. Anybody else thinking about picking one up? Ron or Kyle? Oh, Ron, he's not picking one up. I can pretty much answer <laughs> that for him. He has an iPad that probably does similar things. Doubtful, but yeah. <laughs> well, I don't use my iPad to game, though. That's the big right. thing. So. Yeah. thing. Exactly. That's like if you're if you're looking for a gaming tablet, like this is it. Yep. So I, it is that that you know excludes not only the iPad but any other any Android tablet. Really, they're not they're not specifically designed especially for that kind of gaming. So except for, except for maybe the you can maybe argue the Transformer, although I don't know if they've had if it, Asus has come out with any more versions of that or not. Yeah, they have not, wow. which is kind of interesting. It has been a while since we saw a Transformer. Mm -hmm. I'm just excited to like prop it up while I'm working all day. And have the controller handy, and I can just play games on it just right here. Mm -hmm. And I'll never hear from you during the day. <laughs> Potentially. It could After be you can take care of the baby two hours later, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> yeah. <great. laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if you haven't read Tim's review, be sure to do that. It's up at the site. Uh, also, in the last two weeks, though, we did our G3 review, which sort of tag teamed, and then I put up a 1 plus 1 review. So G3 in general, we've talked a whole bunch about this on the site or on the show. Um, basically, I think Tim and I are agreeing that it's the best phone you can buy right now. Mm. I would say, Tim, would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, so I think we're both using it as daily phone right now, and uh, I I just don't really have any complaints about it. It's super fast, screen looks good, camera's awesome, battery life's really awesome. Feels good in hand, even though it's huge. I, like I'm not even looking forward to any other phones right now. Well, I want to see what Motorola is doing. Obviously, I'm not really in a hurry to like find the next phone. Like I'm actually pretty satisfied with the G3. So, yeah. Uh, one plus. So the one plus one review was a weird one to write. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for it, and I've been putting it off and putting it off because no one could buy it. So it just seemed like a waste of time to review a phone that no one could buy. Uh, but they're sending out more invites by the day, so you might have a chance someday to buy one. So I reviewed it, and, and basically my thoughts on the OnePlus One are it's actually a really, really good phone. As surprising as that may sound, I, I've actually, I was using it before the G3, and I actually liked it, even though it's huge. The interesting thing is they have same size display, 
and uh, the G3 is like substantially smaller. I don't know if you guys can see that. So same size display there, and it's like half an inch shorter. It's crazy. Uh, but OnePlus One's an awesome phone. Like it's one of those if you have an invite and you're looking for a new phone and you only want to spend 350 bucks, like buy it. Like it's actually that good. The camera's good enough. The display is good enough. The performance is great. Uh, you get Cyanogen Mod, which actually I haven't used it in such a long time, but I actually enjoyed that just because of like the theme chooser and all this stuff and all the stuff you can customize. So yeah, OnePlus One's actually a really good phone. Um, I know there's controversy about uh, quality control issues like the uh, yellowing displays and things like that. Uh, also, everyone obviously hates the invite system and you can't buy one. Uh, but my phone doesn't have any of the yellowing issues. It just looks like a normal display. And, uh, yeah, you know, the invite system sucks, but that's just what they're doing. They're kind of a startup-like company, and they're having trouble keeping up with demand. So, yeah. But otherwise, really sweet phone. I was surprised. I was expecting to hate it. And I uh, actually really liked it. So, I just wish it didn't have the soft keys, but you can disable those, right? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I got that. And I think in the setup process, you get it. You can choose. So I said, give me on-screen buttons now, and I never went back and, and used the, uh, the soft key. So yeah, I went. Would you recommend key. somebody get this over a Nexus 5? I would say, yeah, actually, because the camera's way better than that on the Nexus 5. And so you basically you know, have that sort of stock experience, except you get even more because it's CM on there and yeah the camera I thought was pretty I thought was pretty damn good and then the performance is really great you know there's three gig of RAM in this thing it's a Snapdragon 801 I believe so I mean it's huge don't get me wrong like it's a big phone and so getting the use to that took me a little while but you know once I sort of just settled in on it I didn't mind it oh and then the back of this thing I think I've talked about this this like weird sandstone black back is like the coolest backside ever on a phone I wish every phone had that option so and they have a bamboo option coming soon, too, which looks great. So, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend it over Nexus 5 at this point. I mean, the you, the package just in general is way better. So, yeah. Do you guys have any questions or anything on the OnePlus One? I mean, Tim's had or played with one quite a bit, but... I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's like, no OnePlus for me. I just... I, the whole invite system, they're just killing me like I did the, the way they handle themselves like on the forums and yeah. all the crazy horror stories we're hearing from the forums and all that and it just seemed I, I kind of feel bad for them so but it's not a bad phone it's just the company that I'm not caring for yeah I don't feel bad for them they're kind of doing this to themselves I don't know yeah if you guys have followed any of this Tim and I like every day in our tip inbox get people complaining about OnePlus and their forum situation so probably people just go there and they just say negative things about OnePlus and then the OnePlus admin just delete banned. it all <laughs> yeah they ban them and delete yeah. everything and they're like trying to censor all this negativity out of there yeah. uh, I don't you know I don't really know that's it's just hard if, if you think back to like when Pebble first came out though too like with the Kickstarter stuff they had all sorts of quality control issues there too like when you're when you're a small company working with a manufacturer that's outside of your control like it's it's very very difficult to get all that stuff down perfectly mm -hmm. um, like if you think back uh, actually even Apple has, has had issues with this right where they had the iPhone 4 they were supposed to have a white version that didn't come out until like eight months after it was announced because right. they couldn't get the color to come out right like giant companies have this issue. So if you're a tiny company, like you're going to have quality control issues, especially with something as complicated as a smartphone. Yeah, so they're having, you know, early growing pains. And like you said, kind of expected. So I don't know. Like, like I said, my experience with the phone has been nothing but good, actually. Uh, so, yeah, if you have a chance to buy one, I, you know, and I would assume or hope that they're working through the display issues and things like that. Um, you know, they'll deal with the forum situation when they can't. But, yeah, if you have a chance to buy one, you get an invite, you should really, really consider it. Actually, it's a pretty damn good phone, surprising as that may be. So, oh, Let's see. So uh, just quickly, we ran a poll today on micro SD cards. So a couple years ago when the Galaxy Nexus came out, Google basically said we're not using uh, removable storage anymore because... It's a pain in the ass on a number of levels. Basically, it's a lot easier just to have one block of storage to deal with. Um, again, for a bunch of reasons. And so a bunch of phone manufacturers kind of adopted that idea, and they stopped putting micro SD slots in phones, except Samsung. They've kind of always done it. And then all of a sudden, this year, everyone's back to using 
removable storage. Like the One M8 has it, the G3 has it. Obviously, the Galaxy S5 does. Uh, the OnePlus doesn't. But uh, you know, every other phone seems to have it. I'm pretty sure the Xperia Z2 does. So we'll see what Motorola does. Um, and so I just ran a poll to see: is it an important feature or not? Would you? Is it, is it a deciding factor when you buy a phone? Um, I voted. It's an added bonus, but it doesn't completely affect my decision. Like, I buy Nexus phones and the Moto X, and I love those. So uh, I'll just go across the board and see what you guys say. Tim, SD card slot, is it a deciding factor? Um, it's in, it's an added bonus, but doesn't affect my phone buying decision. However, if, you know, I have an option of, say, you know, 16, 32, 64, I would go with the 32. Like, 16 gigs just isn't enough with how much companies, how much bloat, um, carriers and uh, OEMs are putting on the phones these days. I mean, you buy a Samsung Galaxy smartphone and, that with 16 gigs, and it's coming with like nine usable gigs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm putting Modern Combat 5 on there, and it's full. So to me, that's a problem. So it would be nice to have an SD card, but it's definitely not a, a deciding factor. Yeah, Ron, if you're buying an Android phone, SD card slot matter or not? No, I, I mean, I, I, I'd actually rather not have one every time that I've, um, like with the Moto X, I haven't run into any issues with it because I'm not putting tons of, you know, information on there, and I'm certainly not taking a lot of pictures on there. So, um, but, you know, every time that I have, uh, I, I've, I always had issues with it with, with the SD card where, like, it's, it's nice to be able to do that, like, if you want to, like, sideload a bunch of music and stuff like that, like, to be able to throw it on your computer and just and, and organize stuff and do all that. But... The, the downside to it is, like, I would have issues every once in a while where, um, with the permissions and things like that, like, just, like, and, and I think the fact that Google themselves, like, the people that are making the operating system are saying, hey, we're going to not do this anymore because of, because we're having issues. Like, if they're doing it, if they're not doing it, like, one, that seems like, okay, then I would try to get away from that as, as soon as I can. If they're not going to use it with their phones, then that sounds like they're not going to be fixing bugs with that and that kind of thing. So, as a manufacturer, I'd go, okay, we're going to, let's step away from that. Um, but like Tim said, like if I if I'm if I have to go like low end and get like a you know 16 gig phone that's like got a bunch of crapware on there or whatever, like I guess you could put your own ROM on there and get rid of a lot of the crap that comes on there. But if you don't want to go through all that, like I would think that you would want to have the option to you know if you want to just put all your music on there or whatever, like it's it's nice. I don't I don't miss having the option though using my iPhone. I've got a 16 gig 5C. I don't miss having, I'd like to have the extra storage, um, obviously, but um, not for the premium that Apple charges for it. So 100, 100 bucks for another 16 gigs is still crazy outrageous. So. Yeah, I still can't believe they do that, actually, and that people actually pay the extra yeah. price. I well, and that's only choice. recently changed with Android phones, too, where we're starting to see it come down to where, not everybody, but some of them are offering it for, like, 50 bucks difference, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's, that's still a pretty recent change, which is crazy because flash storage has not been that expensive for a very long time. For so. a very, very long time. I mean, I have a 128 gig SD card, and I think I you know, paid just over 100 bucks for it. And it's right. 128 yeah. gig, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's still, they're still overcharging. they got to have profit margins or whatever. That is annoying, though, like when you see like like $50 to go from like 16 to 32 or whatever. Like, And, and we're starting to see some companies start at 32, which has been nice. To see that change, I can't wait till 16 gigabyte phones are just gone. That'd be really awesome. So, and I think I think for the average person, 16 is probably fine um, for most people, especially as more and more people are using Spotify and Spotify. Everybody's using Spotify for music and things like that, and you know, backing up all their photos so they're not on their phone. Like at some point, that local storage is going to matter less. Uh, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Yeah, not quite. Kyle, SD card slots. You have a G2 has one, right? No, it does not. Oh, it doesn't? Okay, I forgot that. Right. So they did um, this year, didn't last year. Okay. Yeah, uh, 32 gigabytes of storage. Um, yeah, I, Ron basically uh, outlined all the points I was going to. Um, I don't know, most of the files I work with are stored in the cloud, either on OneDrive or uh, Google Drive. Um, all the music I listen to is stored in the cloud. Um, and I'm also one of those people that... Uh, you know, roots their phone and removes all the bloatware, just puts on a clean version of Android. So storage hasn't been an issue for me for a long time. I could probably live with a 16-gigabyte phone. In fact, I did. I had a 
had a Galaxy S4 with 16 gigabytes, and I didn't have um, a micro SD card. But um, yeah, I, it's an added bonus, I suppose. It's it's definitely not something I use anymore. I think the last time I really got a lot of use out of a micro SD card was when I had uh, my original Droid. So um, yeah, yeah, I just think it's a remnant of um, uh, hist- history, really. Uh, um, I don't know. I think we've moved past that point. Where uh, I, I mean, at least if you don't game on Android, um, large storage capacities are not really necessary, in my opinion. You you mentioning the Droid gave me a flashback to back when I had my original Droid and I I had like forced an update to 2.2 or something, and my buddy had a original Droid too, so I just pulled my flash card out of mine and hooked it up on his and then did it. So, which is kind of cool. You, could, you can't really do that as much anymore these days, but that was kind of fun. I think I did that. I mean, I didn't trade between um, phones, but I like... <laughs> Somebody else's hooked phone. Up, well, no, I hooked up like an SD card like to my computer to move a file over because my phone was like in a boot loop or something. Mm-hmm. And then I had to like hook, yeah, bring it over to my phone then and boot from, yeah. I did that so, yeah, where you break your phone, and yeah, I, I've done that so many times, and most of the time it's on the road, or like oh, I'm going somewhere, and I gotta try and take my phone work before I get somewhere. Yeah, always fun. Flashing ROMs when you're like away yeah. from home is the worst. I was like, ever. yeah, I was like testing the UI on my Droid too, and it was not bad. Things were happening, so I had to go back. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, so poll results so far. Anyway, we just put this up this afternoon. Uh, 46% said added bonus doesn't affect buying decision, but 42% said it's very important they wouldn't buy a phone without an SD card slot. So only 12% said not important at all. So people love them, and I think you know seeing the manufacturers all go back to them this year shows you that customers either must be asking for them. You know, manufacturers don't typically do stuff without a lot of the times without you know a certain reason. So I would imagine they had enough requests, or they're seeing Samsung still kill it with SD card slots. Who knows? But all right, uh, Verizon news. This is a, this has been fun. So last week we uh, got word that Verizon was going to start throttling unlimited LTE customers who are in the five top five percent of data users uh, starting October first, and then like the next day or something or two days later, Verizon finally confirmed it. Uh, so basically, starting October first, if you're unlimited and you're out of contract, so you're just like one of those people that's trying to keep your unlimited data. And you were in top 5% of data users, which somehow is all the way down to people that use more than 4.7 gigabytes a month. Um, you could be throttled if you are on a you know tower cell site that's congested and has high demand. And then once you leave that cell site, you would not be throttled any longer. Uh, unfortunately, they can sort of keep you in that throttling area through basically a two billing cycles. So it could be that every time you jump on a high demand sell site for up to two billing cycles, you would just be throttled every single time. So it's not really a great thing. Um, Obviously, people aren't excited about that, especially with 4.7 gigabytes being top 5%, which is kind of shocking. I thought that would have been like 8 gig or 10 gig or something like that. Uh, And so the FCC today, actually, this afternoon, uh, Tom Wheeler, the chairman basically wrote a letter to Dan Mead, the CEO of Verizon Wireless, and said, like, you guys better not be doing this just to make more money. Like, why are you um, only doing this to unlimited data people, not everyone? Like, why are you making, why are you changing or discriminating, basically discriminating depending on the data plan and all that stuff? So uh, obviously Verizon will have to respond to that. Who knows if we'll ever get those answers publicly. Uh, It's kind of a mess. I don't know that it affects most of us. Kyle, how much data are you using per month on average? Um, I don't know. It really depends. Sometimes I tether, and uh, that takes up a lot of data. But right. um, like, uh, do you think you're yeah. using more than five gig a month? Honestly, no. Um, okay. I, I rely on Wi-Fi pretty heavily at home okay. and work. Yeah. So, um, and I have pretty fast Wi-Fi, so I sometimes prefer to use that over LTE. I don't have great LTE coverage in my town. Okay. So, but definitely during travel um, is when I get a lot of use out of LTE. Yeah. I do, I do most of my tethering when I'm at a hotel or something. Yeah. So. And Ron, your shared plan, and Tim yeah. and I are basically we've been using more AT&T lately because we're both having AT&T G3. 
<laughs> yeah, so it doesn't necessarily affect our team, but I'm, obviously people are not all that excited about it. I just thought it was interesting today that the FCC was like, and and Wheeler wrote this letter that was kind of nasty. It was like, you know, what the hell are you doing? You're you, this this better. And it was like you can see him like waving. Like this better not be, just so you guys can add to your revenue streams. I don't know how else or why else they would really be doing it. Um, I have heard, and I don't know if Verizon has addressed this or not, that if you're on XLTE, so you have an XLTE phone, uh, you won't ever be throttled. Like if you're connected to their XLTE network, um, then you wouldn't be throttled, but I don't know that they've ever confirmed that. So, yeah, it used to just be 3G. Now they're adding LTE. So Verizon always pissing people off. <laughs> Well, to, to some degree, it, it makes some sense because mm. if they, if they want to improve their network, mm-hmm. like that's one way to do it, right? To force people onto those tiered plans that they're a little bit more careful with their data usage. So well, it's not it's not the worst throttling scheme we've seen because no, um, it only throttles you until you get off that uh, off the cell site you're on, right? And then you're Correct. and then you're good. So yeah. it I mean, really it, does, it, yeah. Go ahead, Ron. Sorry. I was just gonna say the reality is like Verizon has a network quality problem. You know, like that. Well, I mean, not necessarily quality, but the they have a network speed problem. So That's I think. Which, yeah, I think everybody's kind of recognized that. Like it's it's better than it was when you were stuck with their 3G. It's definitely better than that. But um, and they still have really great coverage, but the speeds are not what they should be. So. Right. Um, although, although, like like I said before, like a lot of people complain about New York, especially in Midtown. I have great speeds there, so yeah. I think it's all it's all subjective to what you're dealing with and you know how many people are around you and how many people are hitting the same tower and all that. But um, they obviously have some issues there that they need to work out, especially if they don't want to lose customers to AT and T. I think it just looks bad because it's just you know unlimited people that are out of contract. That's it. I mean, there's got to be, you know, there's there's got to be family plans out there that bought like a 20 gig plan and they use it because they need to tether all the time and they're hammering on their connection all the time, and they're probably using just as much or more data as unlimited people, but they're only throttling unlimited people, which is yeah. the crappy part. And they're basically saying, uh, I think in their fact actually it says. Uh, if you don't want to be throttled, here are your options, and one of those is switch to a tiered plan. So, it's that that's why it's so bad is that they're is that they're only doing it to unlimited people. Yeah, but a lot of people like like I know that we saved money when we switched to a tiered plan, tiered family plan. Um, like there's there's ways to make it work. Um, right. Like if, if for whatever reason you need to have unlimited, like then I guess you're screwed. I guess, but you should but you should be like if you're like I don't know what the situation is where you need to have unlimited, like that just you know where that's like an actual need, not a want. Yeah, I mean I think I think a lot of people just they use it as their only internet connection. Like right. They, if, that, if that's the case, that's one thing. But but that's I think that's not normal. Yeah, I don't. I mean I don't know how normal it is, but I think a lot of people, especially the vocal ones, that's what they do. Or they're they're people that are on the road. Uh, and or they're streaming things a lot. You know, they travel a lot, so they stream. You know, Netflix and stuff constantly. So they're using a lot of data. I think it's people like that too. Uh, and I, I guess what the, what's surprising to me is that the that data limit was so low. The top five percent is only four point seven gigs. So, I mean, I think I could hit that if I tried to pretty easily just by streaming some yeah. stuff. And so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't know that. You know, the FCC just sent a letter to them is all they did. They didn't say, like, we're coming down on you. We're uh, going to get you. Yeah, so Verizon will respond, and they'll say that they have to do this because of the network congestion issues, and it's a security reason or some bull. You know, they'll come up with some garbage reason, and then it will that'll be the end of it, and they'll just throttle people starting October 1st. So. Yeah. That's all and the real reason rhetoric. Is, yeah, because yeah. the real reason is they don't want people on unlimited data, and I don't blame right. them. Yeah, I mean, they don't want people using 30 gig a month on unlimited data because they want to yeah. charge people for that. We all know that's the reason, uh, but they won't. They want to charge people for that, and, and like a legitimate reason as a Verizon customer is they want to have a better quality network. Like if you're blowing through 30 gigs just to watch Netflix, like as as a member of you know the Verizon network, I don't want you doing that. Like, don't destroy the network, please. Get on Wi-Fi. 
Mm-mm. I mean, that's an interesting point, though. I mean, if you're a Verizon customer, you don't, you probably don't necessarily want a whole bunch of unlimited people streaming 30, 40 gigs a month. We've got people that seriously say that in the comments. When we yeah. post up how much data do you use, it's like 30, 40 gigs a month. I don't need, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I do that at home, but it's different. Sure, at home, it's, yeah, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I, I don't know, I just, <laughs> that's, it seems excessive, so. Which, you know, at, at some point, you know, maybe like 10 years from now, that won't seem excessive. That'll be normal. Like, you know, I'm sure those yeah. numbers are going to change. Obviously, they always do. But yeah. right now, that seems incredibly excessive and, and not necessary. Like, you don't need to be streaming Netflix, like, while you're driving. Like, it's dangerous. Please don't do that. <laughs> so you hate truck drivers right. who want to watch their shows and do their job at the same time? If you're, if you're driving a semi and you're watching a show, <laughs> yes, I do hate you. Breaking <laughs> news, Ron hates truck drivers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th- I think it's on Verizon, you know, to invest more billions of dollars into the network to not make it so crappy, because this is America. Am I right, people? And, like, if I have an unlimited data plan, I should be able to use it however I choose. You know, that's that's the rule. And, uh, you know, if I have that's unlimited small. data, let me use it. Don't throttle me, you know? Um Maybe Verizon should just make their network better because AT and T has a fantastic network and. But a huge part of that is because so many people left AT and T for Verizon. They did. That, that, that is a big problem. part of it. Not my problem. Just saying, Verizon <laughs> needs to make it right, better. You're, you're hanging out on AT and T with your G three right now, but I'm telling you, <laughs> over here on Verizon, like it, it. You know, like, hey mess. Ron, hey, you see this big Verizon logo on my G three, buddy? I'm actually on Verizon, and it's not that bad. <laughs> Tim has just like multiple G3s hanging out. I have one on every oh, network. On the call. <laughs> no, but that's that's the thing. Like, I, I, Tim, I agree with you that Verizon should beef up their network. They've got the money. I totally agree with you. They should do they that. They do have the money. But I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I get it from their perspective. Like, trying to, like, they're saying that's the top five. Yeah, like they're greedy. They're a greedy corporation, Ron. Come they're on, absolutely dude. a greedy corporation. But they're the only one. Like, I'd rather be with them than AT and T. Such greed. That's just you. That's just you. If you were in my shoes and you were living where I am, you wouldn't care because AT&T's network is fine. The only reason you care is because you're in an area where their Verizon's network is congested. Where That's all your saying. neighbors are are tethering right now. Everybody's tethering right now. Everyone in your neighborhood is tethering right <laughs> Everybody's now. Everybody's watching the wire. Then m- move out of Rancho, Cuco, whatever. Everyone's driving around in trucks <laughs> <Yeah>. in circles. <laughs> They're all watching Netflix. Yeah, and it's come where to the grass is greener. Up here in the old PDX, because 18... You, you just want me to move up to Oregon, Tim. Let's, let's, yeah, let's I, really I, I keep pushing that way. Yeah, that way I can... To Oregon. <laughs> yeah, that way we can totally hang out more. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying, I think the only reason you're bitching is because Verizon's network sucks. Like, but if it was better, then you wouldn't have a problem with it. Right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. If it, if it was great, so then it's I'd say... So it's on Verizon to fix it, not the, for yeah. the people to have to change their ways, make Verizon make their network better. I think it is. That's, a, that's the thing. Like, yes, it's on... It's. It's kind of like uh, like crime in the city. Like, yes, the city needs to do something about it, but the people do too. Oh, but yeah, uh, you know, see that, ooh, that's a nice little, we could, t- oh, I want to go into that with you, but I don't want to do it here. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, like, yes, the city needs to do something about it if there's something Yeah, we need more right. police, but at the same time, you, we need to stop criminals like, from becoming criminals. People need to knock it off, right? Yeah. Like, oh, absolutely. I hear you. But you're, well, you're saying that unlimited data users are criminals, and I don't think kind of like that. That's exactly what I'm saying. They're all Basically. terrible monsters. <laughs> If you're tethering right Thanks, now Ron. in your car with Netflix, you are a criminal. Actually, like specifically in the Southern California area. If you're in a different state, go crazy. Don't care. Yeah, well, I don't if you think, live in so don't quite as many people tether in the Midwest, so leave Ron's no, leave Ron's neighborhood alone. Yeah, your guys. He's Verizon. All right, so that's <laughs> happening, and we don't know if anything's ever going to change. But Just admit it, Ron. Tim is right. <laughs> the FCC's pissed at Verizon for the moment. They'll make up. I'm sure they will. When is it the FCC not pissed? And when has anyone ever cared what the FCC cares? When they're like, failing with net neutrality? That's when. Yeah, right. When they actually do something. <laughs> Instead yeah. of just write, write a letter. Yeah, right. shut down Comcast and then maybe we'll care. Like, yeah. you know, quit, you know. Yeah, either way. I hate Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think we always get back to hating Comcast somewhere. All right, moving out of there. Moto right. Max trademark by Motorola popped up uh, in the last week. Moto Max, which could be a Motorola 
Moto X Max with lots of battery. It's not it's not a trademark for Droid Max since we you know had that last year. Moto Max. I don't really know what else to say about that other than they trademarked it. Big I battery mean, in the Moto X, maybe. Do we need more Droid phones? You know, is it time for the Droid line to die? You know, Never. I, yeah, Never I mean, the, on, the only one that was worth anything was the Droid old Max Ultra, whatever, last the, year. The like, Droid the naming Max, yeah. scheme is just so screwed up at this point. Like, what, what else can you call it? I mean, <laughs> they don't... We need to bring back the Droid. With updated specs, original Droid, same case. Just call specs. it a Droid. Just keep call calling it a droid. droid. Stop R2D2 going to the version. Ultra Mini. <laughs> droid Max. R2D2. Droid Max Plus One. <laughs> one maybe have a giant keyboard. Maybe maybe it should be like the size of the One Plus One but with a slide out keyboard. You got like mm. big keys on there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, called a, <laughs> it's called a laptop. <laughs> it's called a laptop. <laughs> it's called a fat top. Yeah. So. <laughs> 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 I need a fab top. Basically, I want I want the HTC uh, oh, nice. Touch Pro Two, where it slid out and then came out up, up at an angle with the keyboard like that, but really big and a stylus and a stylus, <laughs> a stylus on top. Yeah. Do people use styluses? Styli? Styli. What's... <laughs> Tim didn't use it on the on the shield at well, all. That's just think. because I suck. To... <laughs> I mean, I, I use I've reviewed you know multiple Galaxy Note devices, and I'm always like, I really want to use this stylus, and then I go, I don't know what to use this for. Uh, you know, like, pretty, draw. Pretty. This is completely off topic. Do people draw on their phones and tablets and stuff? What else yeah. do you use a stylus for? Like, no one actually writes notes with a stylus, right? You can type faster than that on a phone. I would hope so, mm-hmm. unless you're doing something weird like taking notes in math or something. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I guess you could do that. Do you do you use a stylus with your iPad? Uh, yeah, for like I've done it for because I use paper on there. So when I'm doing any kind of drawing, that's right. You have that really cool paper app that we'll never get. No, paper. they have like a spe- isn't there a special paper pen you can buy yeah. too? Yeah, it's probably it's like, like three hundred dollars. Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably really expensive. <laughs> but it's number one on Amazon for uh, PC accessories. Interesting. Really? Like beating all the like every mouse and keyboard like. It's kind wow. of crazy. I guess I've just like I like I said I never I'm always like I really want to use this pen, and then I can't think of anything, and then I doodle for a second and go okay I'm done doodling. Yeah, it was great for draw it when that was popular. Oh yeah. All right. Anyways, out of there. Uh, so, okay, so we, well, I'll let Kyle sort of lead the charge on this. So Sprint and Virgin announced this really weird plan today where you could. Like add on Facebook access for twelve bucks a month or something, and maybe a streaming music service. And it's kind of well, it's taking off on our site and going all over Facebook right now. So, Kyle, do you want to talk about this kind of intro sure. and talk about it? Because I haven't really followed it. I'm sorry, I have to admit that. Oh yeah. So um, basically, Virgin Mobile, um, which is owned by Sprint, from what I understand, um, revamped their pre- uh, their prepay program. Uh, It's now called uh, Virgin Mobile Custom. And um, basically what it allows you to do is add or pay a little bit extra a month uh, to add on top of your uh, existing bucket of data unlimited access to a couple of social media apps like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Pinterest. Um, And then if you want to pay even more, you can get uh, access to a music streaming app of your choice. And then you can add on lines as well. I think it's like six ninety eight for a line, and then if you pay an extra five dollars, then that line can also get unlimited social media access. And um, a lot of people, including me, are kind of crying foul because it seems like um, Virgin is uh, favoring a, f- a few certain social media apps over all the others. So, um, you know, I, a lot of people are saying this is a net neutrality issue, whether it is or not. Um, I'm not sure, you know, some people seem to have their own definition of net neutrality, but um, I don't think it's a positive development because it's certainly hurting the smaller guys in, in the space. Um, you know, only the giants are, are uh, or can be added as, um, you know, extra services on top of your bill. Um, <laughs> we were just joking about this earlier, but um, you don't see apps like Path on there. <laughs> right. uh, if, if you're limited by a very small cap and you use Path a lot, well, then you're stuck. Um, on the other hand, if you use Facebook, then 
you're fine. And uh, even more worrisome, uh, the president of prepaid uh, at Sprint, uh, Dow Draper, um, funny name incidentally, um, <laughs> Uh, even hinted that, you know, in the future, um, promotions like these may become paid, like companies, it, it would essentially turn into AT&T-sponsored data where companies would pay Sprint to provide unlimited access to users. Right now, it's kind of like the reverse of sponsored data where um, Sprint is putting the cost on the user. So, Thanks, Sprint. Yeah, yeah thanks, Sprint. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you a little bit in that it's, it's not a good start to what could potentially become really, really bad, right? Like you said, the small players can't either afford to partner with companies like this to have their service be up there as an option. And like you said, people then have to, their choice is Facebook instead of Path or something like that because their data package can't handle them using Path or something like that all the time. And then, yeah, when you talk about AT&T's that whole paid data thing and where this goes from there and if companies do start paying Sprint to add their services onto their list of choices and things, it's just not a good... While I get, like, it, they're trying to make it an affordable way for some kid that loves Facebook, I just don't... If you start, like, ESPN could then have, say, like, we're going to be the only TV provider that you can watch on your phone. So add us for 10 bucks a month. And then, you know, like, the local... TV network or sports network or an upstart could never do that because ESPN can set that price and buy, I don't know it's just it does it's set a slippery sort of, slope you're right yeah it is so yeah I'm not a fan of it either I'm glad you called them out for it today yeah well this deserves a lot of attention like I was saying earlier to you guys um, because I think it's underhanded and uh, Sprint should definitely be discouraged from doing this kind of thing um, uh, on the on the other hand, I, I think it will actually turn out to be a quite popular plan, unfortunately. So we'll have to see. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess we'll see. If it turns into a popular thing, then that's really bad news for all of us probably because <laughs> then other people will try to do it. I don't know. I feel yeah. like it, it has a lot of appeal, um, especially to, you know, like you just mentioned, the kid who loves Facebook but nothing else and is just looking for a cheaper data plan because that's really um, the demographic, well I mean not just kids necessarily, but the demographic this is targeting is um, lower income people who want a more affordable plan um, and maybe they just use social media a lot so they're fine with that they're, they, they'll settle for that or you know maybe they just uh, like a particular music service so you know, whatever, an extra couple bucks a month, you know, is that really a huge difference from what they're paying now, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I think Sprint may unfortunately hit a home run with this stuff, um, but I don't. that doesn't make it uh, positive. <laughs> yeah. I just don't want my data package to one day be picking and choosing which services I want to use because they paid to be those services that are available. Right. So we can only uh, hope that the uh, that Tom Wheeler sends uh, Sprint a strongly worded letter as well. <laughs> yeah, Tom, you better be drafting that up right now. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts there? Anybody? No. All right. So sort of on similar <laughs> stuff. talking all sorts of FCC stuff. Um, Obama needs to sign a bill to basically make phone unlocking legal again. I believe last week I went through the House. Yeah, I went through some government body. It was a, I think it was a parliament. by both the Senate and House. So it was just Parliament. Obama's parliament? <laughs> <laughs> Is that still a thing? <laughs> yeah, right. Countries. Right. Oh, oh God. I'm talking about America. <laughs> talking about America. This country. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, he basically Bizarre, was designed yeah. to make <laughs> this bill. Uh, or he needs to sign a bill to basically make it legal again. Uh, I mentioned that things haven't really changed much. This doesn't really change all that much. Basically, you still have to fulfill a contract. In other words, it's not the Wild West of phone unlocking. You can't just buy any phone you want on contract from a carrier and go, unlock this now, and they'll have to do it. It just doesn't work that way. Nor can you just run off and unlock it yourself, as far as I know. You still have to fulfill your contract once you do that, you can unlock it, and you still probably have to request an unlock code and things like that from your carrier. 
So it hasn't really changed. It doesn't change a whole lot. It just makes it so once your contract's over, you can go unlock away and not get arrested. But hey, it's still a good thing, I guess, for people that unlock thing. phones and want to jump between carriers. It's a great thing thing for uh, for freedom. It is. <laughs> it is. So thank that you, was Parliament. all over. Last year. Yeah, thank Parliament. you. Yeah, thank you, Parliament. <laughs> you know, uh, I thank I you, really... King Obama. It's really unfortunate that Verizon is CDMA because I couldn't care less about this phone unlocking thing. <laughs> just yeah, well, sprint, dude. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I don't really... <laughs> Who would do that? Who in their right mind would do that? <laughs> what a troll. What a troll. Um, <laughs> hey, they actually made money. Did they Did they release their, their quarterly numbers today and actually made money? I can't oh, believe it. Sprint? But... sprint? No yeah. way. And they don't yeah. spend money. I think they that, do that money. Harman Kardon edition must have really just <laughs> been a blockbuster for them. Oh, that yeah. That, that was the peak of sales for sure. There's all those family <laughs> playing commercials. They finally got some subscribers. Yeah, they had to pay Kevin Durant probably millions of dollars, and somehow they still made money. That's insane. God, I love KD. <laughs> KD. Uh, I yeah, no, I'm pretty I sure. <laughs> I'm looking up right now. With my friend, my friend. Where it releases. Da, da, da. No. I like how he says, hell no. Let me be part of your family plan. <laughs> I thought they like stopped their losses and actually turned a little bit of a profit. Turns out you were mistaken. I'm pretty sure they did. I just can't find anything because no one writes about Sprint. So. Sorry, Sprint. Oh, there we go. Beats expectations by three cents. <laughs> <laughs> camp, you mean three cents a share, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah three, yes, cents. <laughs> three cents a share. The company had three. a revenue of eight point seven nine billion compared to. Uh, oh, come on, where is this? I don't even know. I'm on some like local news site. That's the only <laughs> person writing it up, but I'm sure they're just stealing this feed from somewhere else. I don't even know. Copy paste. Shares open, yeah, whatever. I'm pretty sure they turned a small, small profit and stopped all their losses. But anyways. someone in the chat linked to a Bloomberg story. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, see, helpful. beat sales estimates, fewer Bloomberg. customer losses. Good job, Sprint. Uh, what I was trying to say before that, though, was uh, Verizon phones are actually all unlocked, which is sort of surprising. They uh, obviously they only they work on CDMA and LTE, but they're all global phones, and so they all have GSM bands in them, and they're all unlocked and ready. You can basically take them to AT&T right away and throw a SIM in. You won't get LTE, but you'll get HSPA, which it do. It's so Verizon... Than Verizon 3G. Yeah, I mean, it is. So surprisingly, Verizon's one of the more open of them all when it comes to that stuff. Well, and especially if you're, going, if you're going international, it's yeah. a good chance you can find... Like, don't do it through Verizon if you're going to get data. Yeah, just put a SIM in from another country, for yeah. sure. So, uh, all right. I think I opened a and a but I, do you guys want... Do we have time for Q&A? It's already 7.10. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk apps and games. Let's see how quickly that goes, and maybe we'll take a couple questions. Uh, Tim, you got any apps, games you want to talk about? Is Tim you're still muted. alive? Tim, yeah, he's, muted. he's muted, though. <laughs> Did you see my face? Say, like, oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. As I was saying, I always have apps and games. And I was saying, yeah, if there's something good in the Q&A, we could totally do it. Um, I, you guys didn't hear me talking for the past 15 minutes? <laughs> no, we didn't. Sorry. All right. Welcome uh, back, Tim. I was just trying to talk over Cal the whole time, so it's okay. Um, so I got two games to talk about, the first one being Thomas Was Alone. It's a super simple indie platformer game that isn't so much a super simple indie platform game. It has a really deep story that and narration that goes along with it. Uh, it's about a rectangle who is aware of his own um, existence in this crazy world. So he's trying to demystify his life, essentially. And along the way, he meets uh, some great other shapes. There's a square, a uh, little triangle whole bunch of other little characters that are great to play, <laughs> great to play with. So Thomas Was Alone is available on Google Play, I believe, for $4.99. Um, you know, I think I said in the post, just skip your morning, non-fat, non-whip, mocha frappuccino, just pick up Thomas Was Alone. Um, it's not a bad thing to 
buy a, a game for five dollars. You know, I'm trying to get people into buying expensive games. I don't know if I'm ever going to feature a free game again because uh, let's let's start getting into the habit of saying, okay, it's okay to buy a game for a dollar or two. It's okay. Are you saying that Android users are cheap? <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes they can be. Um, sometimes. You, you're like, this wallpaper pack isn't worth a dollar, but in actuality, someone took the effort to download all those images from Google and bundle them into a wallpaper app. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I'm going to give them a buck for that. Um, regardless. Kind of the cost. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta download that. Yeah, well, we talk, we talk about shapes excitedly some more. You, I mean, talk, tell me some more about shapes in this game. <laughs> no, you got, you got really excited about him and the, and the fun shapes he was meeting. And... It's just a really good game, so I suggest you download it. <laughs> it's available on iOS, I believe. It is. So, uh, yeah. Um, but the next game I want to talk about is Modern Combat 5. Um, I'm going to say this right here and right now. The Call of Duty franchise, once Advanced Warfare is released, is dead. Um if Sledgehammer can't bring this game, I mean, pre-sales I hear are terrible. This has nothing to do with the game I'm about to talk about, but I just want to put it on record that Call of Duty sucks and is dying. And I used to be the biggest Call of Duty fanboy there was, but you were, yes. the franchise is just garbage. They've lost all sight of what made it fun to play. So, and uh, maybe if they got some dedicated servers or something like that. Are you still talking about Call of Duty? Yeah. All right, so Modern Combat 5 is like Call of Duty. Um, it takes place in the future. It's essentially Call of Duty, but for your mobile phone. Um, there is, is a great campaign story. Um, the controls are sweet. Of course, I say if you have a, a Shield tablet and Shield controller and or a Shield portable, then it's super sweet because uh, it's like you're you know playing a console game right on your mobile device. But touch controls are just fine as well. Um, the game costs $6.99. Um, but there are no in-app purchases, no BS like that. So once you buy the game for $7, which is two non-fat, non-whip mocha frappuccinos, you own the game for good, you get updates, no in-app purchases. If you like first-person shooters, I highly recommend it. I think this is probably the best modern combat they've released so far, and I've played them all, so it's pretty good. Uh, it, other than that, I got nothing to say. Thank you. It doesn't feature Kevin Spacey. No Kevin Spacey. Uh, they didn't. Wow. Gameloft didn't have enough money to hire him. And uh, yeah, would have, would have taken three no fat mocha latte chinos. <laughs> non fat. They non-fat. added if they added Spacey. Yeah, yeah, those cheap Android users would never go for that. <laughs> <laughs> never go for that. Never. Well, I mean, I, you know, like say Portal and Half Life Two. Half Life Two are available, but they're ten bucks a pop, and I don't think that they have many downloads. Just considering. Ten dollars for games that are kind of you know old school. Uh, maybe if it was Half Life Three, I'd buy it for ten. <laughs> 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 I'd buy Half Life One for ten dollars. What? I'd buy like the original Half Life for ten dollars. Half Life yeah. One is really good. Half Life Two is really good. Two I mean, is let's, good. Let's not get it twisted. I mean, and we're talking for a mobile device. I mean, like Grand Theft Auto. I bought that game for sixty dollars. You know, when it first came out. Um, and now they're available, I'm talking San Andreas and stuff, but now that it's available for mobile devices, like, are you kidding me, the world we live in, and it's only, like, $7. Like, I, it's crazy. If you would have told me that back when I was a sophomore in high school, I think when I started playing that game, I would have called you crazy. Because I, I, I didn't even have, like, a Voyager. I had, like, a flip phone. So, yeah. Either way, look at where we are now. What a trip. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm ranting. This has been Tim's rant. <laughs> this has been. Ron, did you have an app or a game you want to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about a game called Bonza. Um, so basically it's uh, it's kind of like a crossword uh, sort of, but basically you've got blocks of letters that are um, put together and then you connect them to make words um, and they all connect looking like a crossword in the end. Um, so it's free on the Play Store. Uh, my wife and I have been playing it a lot. Um, so it puts the, thankfully, like, so you get, like, there's a bunch of puzzle packs you can get, so, like, it'll give you a clue, um, and then you just, you know, figure out all the words that are all based on a theme, um, and the nice thing is, is, like, if you want to play with a friend or a spouse or whatever, um, the order of those packs is random, so, um, you won't be, you know, exactly on the same level if you start at the same time, which is kind of nice, so, um, yeah, it's called Bonzo, I'll throw the link in the chat. 
Banza. Banza. <laughs> Banza. I, like uh, I just wanted to quickly talk about a live wallpaper I wrote up today called Spin It. It is powered by Unity's game engine, which is kind of crazy. It's a live wallpaper that's got all sorts of 3D movement parts and shapes, and it's really, really nice, actually. Uh, it has, like, six different themes in it, though the company says there's a whole bunch more coming. Uh, it looks great on the Quad HD display of the G3. I, was, I, I thought for sure it would be laggy and terrible and janky. It actually works really good. Um, at the site, check it out because there's a full video tutorial of it and all that stuff. But it's colorful. It's got like rainbowy, colorful moving parts. And I don't know. It's just a really sweet live wallpaper. So check that out. It's eighteen, I believe, is what I paid for it today. Uh, yeah, live wallpapers. They still exist. I just yeah. like that it has that parallax effect. You oh, know? yeah, it has a really like, cool parallax Apple effect. Apple really changed the live wallpaper game with the release of parallax <laughs> effect. Like, hey, look but, at uh, Amazon built certainly... a whole phone based off of it. <laughs> But it certainly affects battery life. Um, no. I'm checking. Yeah. I've got it running. I've had it running all day. and Because that was what I was worried about. I'm checking battery right now. I don't think it's hurting me. Mm-mm. They really I shouldn't these days. I mean... It, it has to if it's constantly pulling uh, your accelerometer gyroscope. or gyroscope info. I don't know. It is. It's not hurting my battery today. Actually, my battery life looks phenomenal today. <laughs> Interesting. Look at this thing. <laughs> Maybe that's because yeah, you got some outdated G2 stuff going on. <laughs> right. Um, Such a hater. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll use it then. There was a different parallax uh, wallpaper that I think Joy Life featured earlier this week. Yeah, that was called Fracta, and uh, Fracta I was using for a while. I believe that one cost ninety nine cents. Um, another great parallax like, except it's highly customizable. It's from the same guys who did, uh, oh god, what was it, Fotile or something like that? Uh, just oh, yeah. another live wallpaper that we, me and Kellen rocked, or Kellen and I rocked way back in the day, all the time. And um, we would always like exchange wall, like one day we'd have lunch or something. He would show me his live wallpapers, like, all right, what is that? Let me get that. And then we just constantly go back and forth with live live wallpapers, <laughs> like Pixel Rain. You remember Pixel Rain? Pixel Rain. <laughs> that one. Was Pixel awesome. Rain. Yeah. Look at this thing. Look at all the movement there. Oh, you can't. Oh, well, it's black and white. They're, it looks like crap. Um, I never look at all. It's so awesome. You guys should get this. It's the coolest light wallpaper I've had in a while. All right. Anyways. Speaking of wallpaper. Yeah. yeah, speaking of wallpapers, I've actually been still using like the now paper like wallpaper. This one actually is unreleased. This is Portland right here. And I, I might be the only person besides the developer and the, the artist who made it to have Portland. What? You have the Portland now paper? Yes, I do. And you're not I, sharing this? I, I, I actually just got it five minutes ago. I will share it with you. But uh, And it's legit. But um, now, now paper kind of tastes like the Google Now inspired wallpapers, but um, they're cut like custom done, they're not from Google servers or anything like that, but uh, they're done in that same style. And uh, they got SF, they got Grand Canyon, they got mountains, they got wind farms, and uh, I love the Now now papers, because they're done in, like, you know, uh, HD, and also I believe they're done in QHD, so they look great on the G3, and they, they don't stretch out funny or anything like that. So, big props to that developer and the artist, because uh, it's a nice little app. So, Now That's paper. So. One word. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, did you have an app you want to talk about? Right. Uh, well, I just wanted to um, let everyone with an Android Wear device know. I bet I could count the number of Droid li- readers with Android Wear devices on one hand, probably. But <laughs> <laughs> those of you out there, um, there is now a web browser for Android Wear. What? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's called the uh, Wear Internet Browser. Uh, I think a developer just did it for the heck of it. But if you really feel the need to Google something on your wrist. Well, it's there, I guess. Um, it's awful. Everything is squished and nasty. And of course, with 512 megabytes of RAM and a Snapdragon 400 processor, it doesn't run all that well. But uh, yeah, side load it if you feel like it. <laughs> Wear Internet Browser. I'll, Can I'll try I just to find say a link to it. Completely. I'm not sick of Android Wear, but kind of. Like, all the apps that keep coming out are just not good. They're not adding anything to the platform or making it better. I don't know. Maybe I'm just still waiting for the 360, but right now, where it's just meh. Yeah, I mean, for goodness sake, you see people coming out with um, app drawers. <laughs> it's like, what? Doesn't yeah, there's like the launchers point of it? and app drawers and stuff. That just people stop making 
Android Wear into a Galaxy Gear. We don't want that. No one wants that. I really don't want a file browser for my watch. <laughs> no, I don't want any of that stuff. It's ridiculous. It's there yeah. just in case. <laughs> just in case. That one time. Yikes. Uh, so Samsung just released their quarterly numbers. Anyone want to guess what the percentage was of profit falling? <laughs> That's a good question. Hmm... Profit fell what percent? I'm like gonna guess course. like, well, the best guess I could say is maybe like roughly twenty percent. Yeah, twenty five percent. To twenty five percent. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Yeah. Jami. Jami's taking over, guys. It, it is. <laughs> yeah. Blame Jami for everything. Uh, yeah. So operating profit fell twenty five percent annually. Uh, third straight quarter of profit decline. And Samsung said. Quote, looking ahead, the second half of 2014 will remain a challenge. The losses are going to start mounting for old Samsung, apparently. Well, I mean, when they, uh, you know, they're just so stupid. Like, their, uh, their global smartphone market share slipped 7% from a year ago. What else is down? But the, the heart rate monitor. <laughs> but but the heart rate monitor, <laughs> IP67. Yeah, good. not not good stuff. Yo, game makes will not save you this time. Sam. So the Note 4 is not going to save them, or a Metal Galaxy Alpha, or whatever the hell that thing is. Right, <sighs> just rumor jet. It. it may be unveiled on August on, 4th. On Monday, randomly. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have enough money to spend on a giant event for it. Oh yeah, that's great. And part of the drop was a twelve percent drop in mobile sales. It was the Galaxy S five, man. That phone sucked. Like and everyone yeah. knows it. Like no one I don't think anyone really bought that phone like people thought it would, you know? Well, it just sure. wasn't an upgrade, yeah. Yeah, it just it just sucked. So I'm glad that people saw through the hype and <laughs> decided not to get it. And props to HTC who seems to be, you know, doing okay with their M eight. Well, Although so the Samsung, G3's right? Them both. They're reporting all these terrible numbers, and yeah, HTC just said we actually made a little bit of money last quarter. LG said we sold record number of smartphones. Huawei just said they sold a record, I think, for them and jumped up. Obviously, there's yeah, Ron's Xiaomi is doing fairly well, I think. And they're <laughs> fairly not, well. They're not really a player at this point, but they might be soon. They are in China. Yeah, I think but it's, it's, Huawei said they're third and. Uh, third in the world for this quarter. Something like that, yeah. Uh, Motorola is obviously doing a lot better with, uh, you know, because the Moto G and Moto E, they're actually, I don't know that they're making money yet, but they're selling more phones than they have in a long time. So everyone's starting to do well, and Samsung is, I mean, that's 25% annually. Oof. So yeah, that just came across the wire, by the way. I think they'll be okay. I think they'll probably be okay too, but that's, not a, good, not, that's not a good sign. And they actually sound worried for the rest of the year. So and they just they spent too much money on uh, LeBron and all and, that stuff. And every major soccer player in the world, and yeah. the Oscars, and the Grammys, and whatever. I mean, the Olympics, whatever else they spend money on. I'm yeah. surprised they didn't buy the World Cup. Maybe they realized they didn't have any money. They have, they have that uh, McDonald's tournament. beat them to it. Oh, the terminal, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, the terminal. I forgot about that. So, yeah, anyway, that's Samsung. We haven't had our, like, LG tip of the night, have we? We always get one of those. It's coming. Yeah, we usually have it by now. Let's see, what did they... Well, they announced a little something. Oh, it's just G-Watch stuff. That's not important. Yeah. All right, well, uh, anything else you guys want to talk about, or we can just wrap here? Uh, I was just looking in the Q&A, but there doesn't seem to be anything too important in there. Nothing too wild. Oh, real quick for everyone asking, uh, I was just going to showcase baby hand real quick, or <laughs> whatever you guys are calling it. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well, because it's very light, but um, I can at least tell you the story real quick. Um, when I started getting my tattoos a few years ago, I... Wait, is I, Baby Hand still in the chat, though? I know Baby Hand was in the chat. <laughs> we did have a Baby Hand. We well, did. Baby yeah, he is, he is. Or okay. Shion Love is the one who was really requesting, but uh, so I started with the concept of the seven deadly sins, and uh, 
So this one was going to be Lust, um, but at the time I was living in San Francisco. My tattoo artist moved down to San Diego, and then I moved up to Portland. So I, I just haven't connected with uh, my friend yet to finish this, so now it's just an outline of a naked lady who's, like, going all, like, sexy. But um, she's going to be kind of, like, morphed and stuff. It's it's really dark, and every time someone says it's, like, a little baby hand, I'm like, it's the furthest thing from a baby hand. It's a naked <laughs> chick on my arm. So I always feel silly, but, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby know. hand is still there. Baby hand. Oh, <laughs> hey, baby <Earth>. hand. <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah, either way, baby hand. <laughs> Naked right. lady hand, that's what it is. That's, uh, it's, no, it's, it's forever story. now going to be baby hand. No, I'm sure, I'm oh, sure everybody, I'm sure everybody believes you, Tim. Everybody believes it's not a baby hand. Yeah, totally, man, absolutely. <laughs> that's cool if they don't. That's fine with me. I'm putting the truth on path. <laughs> <laughs> For two people to read. Everyone check your paths later, yes. <laughs> don't try to add me. I won't add you back. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you, now you said that you're gonna. Everyone's gonna. Yeah. Jump through <laughs> oh, that's funny. Everyone's gonna go download the app, make it yeah. down. Yeah, because first everyone would have to download the app. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Or you guys want to call it a night? Let's call. Oh, yeah, real yeah. quick. Any oh. Giants fan in here? The Giants have cut Dan Ugla and Tyler Colvin. Who have been making us suck for the past two weeks or so? Yeah, but why so, did you, why did you pick hallelujah. up Dan Ugla? The Braves cut him because he's a chump. Yeah, Stupid well, pickup. we we needed him because we have injured players on our roster, and then we found out that Ugla sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 we dropped him. Thank goodness. All right, go Braves. All right, uh, yeah, let's wrap. We'll be back in unless something crazy happens in two weeks. So uh, thanks for joining us. Episode six five, peace. Baby, bye, bye, Ron. <laughs> bye, baby. Bye, enjoy, <laughs> bye, Kyle. Enjoy the last few weeks of summer. Bye. Oh, thank you. <laughs>